Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Heed Army podcast and what a few days it's been for Gateshead. Uh, victory in the FA Trophy semi-final on Saturday. It was a bit of a squeaky bum time in the second half, let's all, we can all admit it, but we got through and then the draw today, which we will get into, which made me have my heart racing for quite a while with the excitement of that one. So uh, it's it's all to talk about. We want you to get involved and uh, this is how you do it, especially if you get subscribed first. Well, that isn't working, the subscribe button. Uh, we've got a little trouble there. Anyway, uh, none of it. Uh, is anything coming up on the screen there? It doesn't seem to be. Uh, so we can, I hope I can bring up pictures later on. But anyway, like and subscribe. <laughs> the more important, if you're on Twitter, come over to YouTube. You can comment as people have done. Hopefully these are working when I press them. As we've got Darcy Gray has put even and all, and you can get involved like that. Um, also, we've got the game tomorrow against Dagon Redbridge to talk about, and also uh, the game at the weekend and the prediction league. And if there's anything else I forgot, Le JOC Ladies as well. Mickey's got some information on uh, young players that are coming through and setting the world alight. So it's a very positive show. I'm going to bring the lads in now. Uh, there's Mickey, there's Steely, and also we've got a surprise guest in Mark Carruthers. And uh, as I say, lads... Oh, what what a what a couple of days for Gateshead, and um, without any discredit or uh, not discredit, without any um, being cocky against Macclesfield, it's a draw you would have wanted, considering the opposition that's still left in. Um, but to have oh, Mark's just disappeared there. To have uh, Macclesfield at home, uh, it's going to be a very very tough game. But a team from uh, two divisions below um, going into a semi final, you've got to think. That's a good draw at home. Plus, they're a very well supported club. They're going to bring a lot of people, aren't they, Mickey? They certainly are. Um, uh, Macclesfield fans think we're going to underestimate them. I think Peter Brass Sports knocked that out of it uh, on Saturday. Um, I certainly am not taking them too lightly. I, we, Steely, Davy, yourself, we've been on the end of cup shocks. Oh. And we know how crap it is. And we're certainly not going to underestimate Macclesfield. And I mean, uh, oh, was the it first. is the, the pick of the draw, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, it's going to win it from Leo Solly Hull. So, yeah. It's a, it's a draw we wanted, wasn't it? If you, if you know, no, oh, that's, that's been no, no disrespectful to Macclesfield, but that yeah, is the draw we wanted. No disrespect at all. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, very well, uh, you know, well supported the club. They're making their way back up the leagues. Mark's back with us. I think he's had a little bit of. Uh, <laughs> issues with his uh, connection there. Right, but, just like to make an entrance. Yeah, that's what it is. Just wants to be <laughs> known that he's here. Um, but no, Macclesfield, you know, they've went through some tough times. They're, they've come back up through the leagues quite quickly. Um, didn't they have, did they have a FA Vars final as well on, on route through uh, already? No, I'm thinking of somebody else. Um, yeah, it's... Um, no, it's going to be a good... I think it's going to be a fantastic attendance. I uh, imagine Macclesfield will bring close yeah. up to the eight to 800 to 1,000, if not more. They're riding the crest of a wave. Obviously, they've got the the, the owner in Robbie Savage, who's you know oh. bringing them a lot of publicity. It's going oh. to be it's going to be a good day. By the way, David, it's, it's the draw. They want, well, not that they wanted, they would like a home game, obviously. But as one of their fans said, you know, it's a short trip up and it's uh, it's the weaker of the three teams that we're in. So if we're going to get anyone else, they wanted Gated, if, if that makes sense. So, hey. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It is. Um, loads of messages coming in. Darcy Gray has put hello. Just put, didn't know uh, Tabitha was the only person to predict 3 2. Wow. On she wasn't. I've got the I've got the proof here and I'll quickly put that up. On <laughs> it works. Um, there it is. Oh, David, it's working. It's coming up. Everything's coming up. up, is it? All right. Well, I can't see it. It's not coming up on my screen. It's de definitely up there. Yeah, it's up there. So um, I think, was it um, Mickey's other half got the other three, two, right? I'm not sure. Did she? It's yeah, coming up. Sorry, yeah. Dave, Ed, Dave Edwards and Tabitha Walton. It's come up on my screen eventually. Yeah, it's in, it's in, yeah, it's in three, two. Yeah, Tina, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Uh, well, there you go. Go. Did you? No, no, it wasn't. It was <laughs> Dave did? Edwards and uh, Tabitha Walton. Oh, um, but yeah, the, a, a great result. While we're on, let's get the actual game up on the screen and talk about Saturday before we go on any further. Are we just uh, stopping at half time? Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> um, if we must, um, I'll add it to the screen, get us to the bottom here. Um, I'd say the first goal was lovely. A nice run from uh, that man, Regan Booty. Here we are. And um, fortunately, but unfortunately, it was nice it didn't sit up for Warman because Dejon Brown was there just to lash at home. 
I think that I said in the commentary, didn't know that it was it was a clever finish because he could have just lashed at that, but it's so well placed. Um, if anything, it's probably helped that he's he's put it close to the keeper because um, the keeper just can't get down quick enough. But uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a good finish, really good finish. I mean, the, the, I like this. I like the second one. <laughs> yeah, the sec- it's it's the uh, we were talking just before we came on there, lads. It's the the step to the side to create the space for himself, and after that, it's you know it's a foregone conclusion as it was this this move here there look at the space he's got and then just calmly strokes it home uh but no lovely stuff great to see the young lad flourishing i mean uh you know mark is still adamant it was denanga's goal on tuesday night i still think it was five <laughs> and three uh for uh dijon but um no amazing stuff and uh i see lots of people put, send in their messages while we're Watching these highlights, I'll put up the evening messages. So um he's, he's powerful, but he's also skillful, isn't he? You know what I mean. And and defenders hate that because he's got pace, you know. And yeah. yeah, he's 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 destined for big things, as we all talk about. Definitely, definitely. And um it's just like a bundle of electric energy when he gets the ball. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's but, and, and he gets defenders sense it. seats now. Well, yeah, you know, this, this is a good finish as well. He gets through there, he's in the right place, and just does the outside of the boot that he puts that in with. Like that, just yeah, yeah. Right, right place at the right time, and yeah, that's that's yeah. A, a sign of a good forward or getting in between yeah. the two defenders. Um, and oh, maybe, right. yeah, yeah. Just sorry, Mark, just quickly jump in. The cross from Hassani is unbelievable, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah, really hasn't been given enough credit for it, but. It's just perfect, literally a perfect cross. Um, taking out the defender, it's in that keeper. place where the keeper can't quite come out for it. Um, yeah. yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the corridor of uncertainty, I think you were looking for, Mark. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I didn't, want, I didn't want to go all Ron Atkinson and everyone, so <laughs> <laughs> at half time, I was doing a little bit of filler, and as I kind of mentioned, and Mark, this, is, oh, this would have oh. been a lovely goal if it had to come off. I did say, I said, look, it's. it's it's not all over yet at half time. Um, and Peterborough come out with uh they were unleashed, weren't they? They didn't have anything to lose. They chucked the kitchen sink and it got the goal. Uh, some poor defender from us, which we'll see shortly. And then with getting a quick fire one, it just changed their composure altogether, didn't it? It gave them such cool. a second wind, or even the first wind, as it were. And our midfield at times the passing wasn't great. So I, I thought that one was going in as well from Evans. I that as Mark said before we came on there, that probably would have put the nail in the coffin altogether in the game if that one had went in. Yeah. Uh, See, young man did well. Evans uh, becoming a big fan of his. But yeah, the the second half was a it was a war of attrition at times for our midfield uh, in the passing. We had to we had to dig deep. We we weren't always on top of it, but we got it was through. Ragged. ragged yeah. Would you describe it as? Yeah. It was a. It, it wasn't pretty. Uh, you know, and when we see, you know, when they get their goal and stuff, I mean, they, they, it's a good finish, not much you could do, but uh, Monty has come straight and low, like bit like the other one, very direct at him. But yeah, it, it this was just that little nervy thing that made you think, uh oh. And then obviously, when they get the free kick just after this, but uh, yeah, it was a definitely a nail biter, lads. That's a, that's the best way to nail bite. I mean, nerves are bloody shredded. <laughs> I'm, still not, I'm still not 100% convinced this was a penalty, uh, free kick, by the way. Yeah, I'm not neither. When I seen it, he mm. just fell. Yeah, it looks like he just fell, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think there might have been hands on the back, you know. Give over. Soft <laughs> but there we go. I mean, now, yeah, I mean, you can criticise the marking, but you can see it's a good move. The two players went in together. One of them went up, missed it, and the other one come in behind him. So, you see, look, they're just perfectly in line, aren't they? Look, boom. Uh, Monty. Just get a point for Michael Gash, by the way. I did see on last week's podcast, Michael Gash had scored. Yeah, it was, does. It was yeah. Gash that scored. Yeah, we to say, I think I credited Jarvis in, the, uh, in real time. But, yeah, no, there's it's one of them games. I mean, we can... We don't want to pick over the, the poor bit too much, but it's all a learning curve. The younger lads were in, you know, and, and start, it was, you know, he was very busy, uh, as were the rest of the midfield. But some of the positives, Robbie Tinkler back, 90 minutes under his belt. Um, 
lovely to see. And uh, especially in the first half, when he when he wasn't under so much pressure, he looked like the Robbie Tinkler that was playing just before he injured his shoulder. And I, and I yeah. think, like I said before, we, we came on air, we, we've got to kind of remember that not, not just with Gateshead players, but any player coming back from what has been quite a long-term injury in, in terms of the season anyway, they ain't just going to slot straight back in and, and you know, just hit the ground straight away. It's going to be a bit of a uh, bit of patience shown towards them. Another man there who could say the same thing about and Tom Allen. Tom uh, Allen, uh... And, and you know, players have to have time to to readjust to to getting back into the the swing of things. But uh, great having them back, and the squad all of a sudden at such a busy point of the season is looking looking very good. Yeah, um, we've got a few messages coming in. We, we'll get through them all. Don't worry, we won't miss them. There was lots and lots coming in. It was amazing for you all to be sending and interacting with us tonight. Um, Paul, uh, not Paul Farnfield, Steve Farnfield, obviously was on Sanders accounts. But which of these scored the fastest hat trick for Gated? Dobson at Merver, Lee Novak at Hyde, or Dijon Peterborough? Um, now I know. That Novak got an award for the fastest hat trick, didn't he? Was it was in yeah. away the height? So yeah, I think that one. That, but there is just there's, I think it's but our resident stati- statistician has said that it's none of them. It's a uh, uh, Keith McNall, uh, oh. with actual um, the, uh, the the record. So we'll have to find out if uh, if Stephanie can send us the actual timing of uh, those goals for. Uh, McNall, and we can we put that dispute to bed. But um, lads, obviously we had the um, the draw today. I'll just take these uh, highlights off for now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we don't want to yeah. dwell too much. Um, uh, obviously, listen to the Vars one before, and the number one ball come out um, for in the draw for the, more or less a replication of the um, uh, the, the, the I would draw, and I thought Lightning isn't going to strike twice. We're not going to come out first and get a home draw. And when we did, that was just like a magical feeling. It was, uh, you're like, yes, you know, for a number of reasons that I'll definitely be able to beat the game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> club can hopefully have a good payday, you know, and get a good crowd in, yeah. and uh, hopefully Tangsay can get behind us again and. You know, a second Wembley visit in two seasons would be absolutely phenomenal. But as we've mentioned before, if there's any Macclesfield fans uh, tuning in, it's not a given. We know that Peterborough Sports, just in the, in the highlights there, give us a real test and we expect nothing different from Macclesfield. Um, but lads, I mean, I, I just got to say, happy, when we mentioned a little bit before we put the highlights on there, a lovely, a lovely draw. It's the, it's the draw... I think it's a dangerous think, draw. Sorry, go on, Mark. I'll let you go. On. I, I, I think it's a dangerous draw. I really do. I think it's um I think it's one of them where it's the game where Gateshead will go in as favourites, whereas the other two I'm not sure they would. Um but <laughs> Macclesfield, you look at their squad, it's full of experience, it's full of lads that have played at a higher level. Um you know that it's full of lads that have played in in football. Well, some have played football league, some have played high in non league. So, it's uh, it's a dangerous draw for me. Yes, Gator will be favourites, but they can't underestimate Macclesfield. Yeah. And also, also as well, I mean, you know, this is, uh, Alex Bruce has just left there. He's been picked up to be a coach of a football league club. Um, obviously doing things the right way when he was there. They're just outside the playoffs. I'll actually add that in their league table at the moment, and um, it's you know that. The, Obviously, they've got games in hand because they are uh, have been involved in the cup competition there. But they're sitting in sixth place, just outside, with uh, two to three games in hand on everyone above them, and they're only two points outside the playoffs there in the National Premier League. And we know that is such a tough league. And if you look at some of the teams that's in there, Geisley, Marine, Hyde, Radcliffe, who are absolutely flying, you'd say champions elect already with um, their, their uh, lead that they've got at the moment. And Warrant and Rylands, who have you know been progressing, but then you look down just behind it, it's really, really tight. I mean, even Whitby in tenth place, they're only you know well nine points out of it, but they've got a couple of games in hand. They could get themselves in. Then you've got Ashton, Worksop Town, Lancaster, and of course Maxfield in six. So that is a very, very competitive playoff situation there, and that'll be their main priority. Of course, they want to progress back up the leagues. 
But uh, yeah, it's a very dangerous team to be playing and uh, do not take them lightly at all. But I mean, just a little side note, but look at the look at some of the names in that league. We had some good oh, away yeah. games, lads. Yeah, some good ones there, aren't they? I mean, yeah. as, you say, as you say as well, I mean, Matt Osfield, you know, got a lot of experienced players there. Um, some with football league experience, they might actually, you know, appreciate and enjoy playing against a club like Gated, where they'll get a bit more space and a bit more time to think about it. You know, up, up the game as well. Uh, I mean, Mark's absolutely right. I know he's just disappeared, but absolutely right. It, it is a bit of a dangerous one. We've got to, we've got to be careful. But yeah, Man, some, some classic names there. Anyway, sorry. So, to be in, honest, it's, sorry, David. Yeah, no, it's all right. Uh, it's, just, I was just going to say, like, Macclesfield was my first ever Gator game, like, proper league mm-hmm. game. I've been to friendlies, uh, you know, Newcastle and stuff. But uh, Macclesfield was a boring nil-nil, and Paul Thompson missed a penalty. So, uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. We, we used to have a wretched, uh, a wretched, um, what you call, record against them. We, we didn't, you know, we, we beat them occasionally, but it was it was generally we lost to Macclesfield. It was a very strong conference team. They were always up in there. The top half of the table, yeah, was it just, Sammy Lee? Was it Sammy Lee managed them out of the league? Yes, Didn't Sammy Lee. Uh, uh, Sammy McElroy. Yeah, oh, Sammy McElroy. Sorry, didn't make your eye. Saying we, we just lost you there, Mark. I'm just saying what an incredibly tough league that is, and you know, there's there's no surprise that um, yeah. Macclesfield are up there challenging because you know they're they're a big side. They're on the way back up, but that is a that is. I mean, it was said years ago, it was the toughest league to get out of, wasn't it? Well. Interestingly, they play Morbeth in two weeks' time. Um, oh, so, you know, nice. good, a good uh, scouting opportunity then. Yeah. For the- <laughs> it's at Macclesfield, but yeah, I mean, it, oh. it's um, it, 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 that league is there are a lot of clubs that have been in that league for a long time, yeah. And they, you know, I look at the, the Matlocks of this world and uh, Lancaster City, you know, Whitby have been in there for years pretty much. Since the since they left the Northern League in the mid nineties, yeah. um, but there are clubs that are um, that are battle hardened at that level. They know how to cause problems for big clubs. We look at the amount of you know these the, the, yeah Salford Cities and yeah um, FC United like, and Manchester's and clubs like that that have come through there or got come from a lower level to hit that point and then stuck there for a couple of years and not yeah. being able to progress straight away. And it just shows how tough it is. Really does. I mean, uh, I say we had some fantastic away games at most of these places, um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic league. Of course, sadly, Mark's down the bottom there. Have Mark been accepted into the Northern League for next year? Then, Mark, do you know? No, not yet. Not no, yet. Um, I think that one will be um, you're probably a few weeks away from that being being well, a few months away from that being finalised. But they have appointed a manager. Um, right. or management team I should say, mm-hmm. for next season. So they've obviously been given some indication that they will be back in. Um, so we'll we'll see. I, th- I think they'll probably end up back in the Northern League at one or two. Uh, for some reason, I've in my head, I've got that they'll be back in Division One. Um, but oh, we'll just have to wait and see when the league allocations come out. At least they're going to be back. That's the main thing on that front. Right. Um, Let's have a little look around here. Lots of things. See where War last spotted her old Skoda parked up when you dropped the family off in the vlog. Who <laughs> 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 uh, hasn't watched the vlog uh, where my children are rinsing me about Gateshead? They're still. Oh, oh, it's hilarious. We're laughing out loud. It's, mm-hmm. it's not. It's horrible. Um, That's and, just because uh, you give you give Mark a load of love on that. You see, and you said you'd get embarrassed. <laughs> Move doesn't, on. doesn't like compliments. No, well, I, I am going to mention it here. Just obviously, me and Mark have been doing comedy for five years now, and I mentioned it. And I'm not going to give it the, the whole lovey dovey thing, but Mark did give us a lot of credibility many years ago coming on the podcast uh, when I mentioned other journalists didn't. And uh, his credibility has helped us a long way, and especially with the commentary as well. And uh, we love you, Mark. We'll move on. The most embarrassing thing about that is that you think I've got any credibility. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that, but I didn't like to say it. I don't mind. I'm honest. <laughs> honest. I'm joking, Mark. Uh, Vanessa has put, uh, even more delayed, you've got the Siltman in the semi. Um, Barry Lee wanted to be them, but the other way around, because he lives, uh, no. lives in Mattersfield, so that's a bit of a good... Oh, you may be a good minister. Thanks, okay, Barry. Yeah. Um, so got is, it, is, is the FA Vars? Is it still two legs for their semis? It it is, is, yeah. Yeah. For the first year since... Covid it is this year. 
Yeah, but not the trophy, obviously. Yeah, as, as yeah. we know. Yeah, some, in, some, in, some interesting sides in there. Romford, Worcester City, Lincoln United, and the other one is like a really obscure name I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, Lincoln and I mean Worcester. I mean, you know, they were a bigger side not so long ago, weren't they? International North when we were in. So yeah, that's a team that will take a few there. Yeah, the favourites in the Worcester City. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think so. Um, just a little bit on here. We've got um, on the hat trick. Lovax was in 15, first 15 minutes and doubles wasn't much more. So we'll we'll find out on that. Uh, say, she gets her laptop back and she'll post it on Twitter when she finds out because she's having trouble with her stats because uh, all of them are on her laptop and her laptop isn't working at the moment. We've got Charles mm-hmm. Watt, Evening Boys, super excited for Gated uh, Football. Uh, Saturday was exciting, but Sunday was excellent with the ladies as well. Uh, also a tough game. Well, I tell you what, we'll we'll give the ladies a little shout up now where they are. We've you sent me some pictures to put up, Mickey, and um, they're not there. I've got one there. I'll get that up. I'll, I'll upload upload some more. Is it up on the screen for you? There is there a picture. It is. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, Jess Wheel. She's been nicknamed Miley. As in the new Wonder Kid from the from the youth setup, she just turned sixteen, and well, we had four of them in on on Sunday uh, down at Chelsea Street United, and they didn't look out of place. They played really, really well. Uh, it was Jess Wheel, Fear, Colleen, um, Davy's got the names. I've I've got them on my phone. And honest, That's Grace crazy. was. Yeah. Grace was outstanding at the back. Uh, and we've got really high hopes for them. And I'm telling you, not not one of them looked out of place in the senior women's football. And it was an absolute joy to see, especially if four of them were involved in the 4-2 win. Uh, really good. Well, absolutely outstanding. And the come, gates to come back from a goal down each time and like didn't romp away with it. It was still a close game. But uh, we won the end of some other refereeing decisions, let's see. But oh, we've oh, got oh. through this one. And Jess Wheel's dad just looks, he just, he just he's in despair, some of the referees. <laughs> and, <laughs> but at the end of the day, without the referees, we kind of play the game. So. Um. Yeah, um, we've got uh, lots of messages still coming in. We will we'll get through them all. Di Evans has put uh, evening chaps crack and cup draw. I can taste them overpriced Wembley beers. Um, I'm sure he's only about <laughs> 11. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's only about 11, you know. I don't know how he's going to have one of them beers. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, that was that one there. Uh, my dad gave me false information. Uh, Darcy Gray, I don't know what that's about. I don't know if I've missed anything. Um, Dejon Brown, some player, and we are seeing uh, the quality in him. We are, he's, he, but that's what we've talked about loads of times. That's what Gator does. We allow players to develop, and it's a two-way street, and thankfully at the moment, it's it's working for both parties, and that's, that's what you want. Um, we've got one here. Uh, no false information given. My daughter's just got false ears. So she <laughs> because, <laughs> because earlier on, she thought Tabaho was the only one with uh, the correct score line. That's what that was. Uh, Northern Beast Media, he's put my mate, a Derby fan. He reckons uh, they'll give him a go next season. I certainly hope so. He means he's you know developing, he's gonna look good. Uh, for an 18 year old, such a cool finisher, it certainly is. Um, you know, and hopefully, we see more of that. Um, we've got a message from Gavin Rudd, he's put evening gents, best draw we could have had, still a uh, potential banana skin. It, it certainly yeah. is, but we've got to go in and respect Macclesfield on this one. Um, Heat Cup games are great for uh, giving your heart a workout, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> to be honest. Me and Steve were talking about it at the end of the game. It, it does nothing for your heart watching Gators and cup competitions, I'm telling you. Oh, no. you, should uh, get a, you should get a heart monitor, shouldn't you, for like 90 minutes just to see. Like, no. Your heart. <laughs> 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 I don't know how you two lads keep you two lads keep quite calm and commentary. You must be like, oh. oh no, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of lip biting and pulling the mic away, <laughs> mic flowing away from your face. <laughs> You can tell you what, my backside was gone that tight. I nearly pulled the chair in on Saturday. Oh, you could, God. You, could, you could probably hear a couple of times second off on 
uh, Saturday, I actually dropped the mic uh, in frustration, didn't I? On yeah, the table. Yeah, that, that's when you know. Uh, that wasn't just over Gates' performance, by the way. No, no, it's it just me sitting <laughs> next to him. But if you if you do hear a mic drop, that's when you know there's either a really frustrating referee or it's just been a, an absolutely crazy decision happened on the pitch. That's that, that's a giveaway. Um, it's, it's Mark's poker tell. That's where it is. Um, and um, got a brilliant draw for us. <laughs> Uh, let's get it done. Uh, it's time for a big home performance. It, it has to be. It has to be. Um, yeah. Got here. Yeah, Keith McNall scored in the 70th, uh, 71st and 72nd minute. Hey, the 86, 87. Yeah. So wow. that would, yeah, that would be the, um, I bet that's a shield. Oh, no, yeah, so it was a cup competition. So it was Dijon, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that, 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 that would take some beating. But hang on, if you're talking about stats and things like that, we do have a competition tonight. Thank you to the brilliant Waterfield. And if you are uh, just uh, brushing up on your gated history, or you've just become a gated fan, there is a book that you all have to read as a rite of passage. And there it is. It is Requiem for Regif by Goff Esther, who was actually my teacher at school. Um, and he oh, used wow. to draw, used to draw footballers all the time like that in art class. Um, and uh, apparently, I'm, I'm sure Graham Wood told us he lived next door to him as a child, and his dad was a communist. So there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that that's didn't more, expect. Uh, that. <laughs> yeah, you see, you learn so much. Um, you learn lovely, lovely I think the, biggest, the biggest surprise there is that we found out you went to school. Yeah, I know. It, <laughs> it, is, isn't it? it obviously didn't work. And is it Goff or is it Jeff? It's Goff. Goff and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. It's got pictures of you know uh, heroes there, Huey Gallagher, and all the stats and history yeah. of the club all the way through to the seventies, and uh, I think even the eighties, isn't it? Uh, the end there. But um, that is there, and you can win this. Do update, surely. Oh yeah. Well, I, I don't think he's alive, so someone else is going to have to um, uh, go into that one. But, I think uh, we've got someone right in the top corner there who's more than capable. Oh, an, oh, an author. Well, well now, now we've found out Davey went to school, I agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you might have to do the ghostwriting for a mark. Now, if you want to enter, there's some simple rules. Be able to come to one of the next home games and pick it up from the commentary desk. So if you want to enter, hashtag book. It was going to be hashtag Captain Underpants because of obvious reasons with Steve Farnfield. But I thought we are gated fans and not all of us can spell that well. So book <laughs> is the word that it is. Hashtag book. So if you would like to enter that and you'd like to win this and uh, say John Dick did pick up his, um, his cup mug, on uh, Saturday, and I uh, believe Jamie is going to pick up his mug tomorrow from uh, the commentary desk as well at the game. So hashtag book if you would like to win that. And uh, yeah, there's also the, the Calendar Brothers are in there as well. Look at that there. It's full of history, full of facts, and a must for any Gated fan. Good read, actually. It is, yeah. It's, um, this is, uh, I was say. I loved it the first time I read it. Uh, oh, hang on one second. Someone's putting a question here. Anyone, uh, any chance of getting a Mr. Savage on the podcast before the game? And um, we can reach out. I don't know if you'll say yes, but uh, we'll see. Um, certainly, you know, it'd be good to have him on for a chat and find out what he's like because uh, he's got he's got a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I think even the Evans family will probably dislike Robbie Savage. No. <laughs> They'll love him. They'll love him. <laughs> proud Lancastrian Welshman. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, Steve Farnfield. He's put uh, was not from their kickoff, but they scored within 22 minutes of the game of kickoff. I don't know what that's in reference to. Maybe I haven't left that yeah, one. Quick as hat, Rick. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, we've got Darren Walden. Macclesfield will have seen what Peterborough did to us in the second half and take heart. And fancy their chances against us, of course. Of course, um, you know, it's both both sides are scouting, uh, don't be fooled. And, um, you know, they'll try to look for a way to disrupt us. Uh, Peter, well, it's not long ago where we played in the National Premier League, it certainly isn't. We had, just yeah, mentioned, sure, had, some, right. had some beautiful away days, uh, in that league. Uh, Colin Dilbo, we'll uh, get St. Helens Town, oh, <laughs> and Winsford. Oh, Winsford, yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, if we put a strong team out, uh, we are close to the, our best. Uh, there's only one winner. Yes, Macclesfield are a very good side, but they are uh, 
we are in another chance of football league. True, true, but you know it's a cup competition. We know what cup competitions are like in England, especially FA Trophy, FA Cup. But we we don't have to see any more. Um, uh, so I've just had a quick glance there. I see, uh, no, I, I'll focus on it too much. But Newcastle are playing away that day. Um, in, in early April, away to Fulham, so that'll help us a little bit. Um, but speaking of Newcastle, Mark seems to be entertained by the match. How's it doing, Mark? You seem to be glancing at the match there. Well, it's not going very well. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, wow. what's, the sc- what's the score? It's out of interest. We're going to be 1 0. Oh. Oh, that is doing my coupon the world of good. Um, <laughs> right, we've got uh, let's say Lincoln United beat us 3 2 when we were leading with 2 0 with 10 minutes to go. How many times has that happened? God, um, just that's count how many times we've done it under bogey. Oh, yeah, um, right, we've got here, um, Mr. Luke is about the Gator Ladies. Great to see you, Gator Ladies, doing well. How are you, the lasses? Uh, we've got here uh, from Lily Nolan. Do you think Gator will go back to Wembley? Certainly like to think so. Um, it'd be nice. Uh, but you know, nice you know nice. the uh, be- best, best thing about it is obviously the fans. Obviously, we get carried away. We got the draw we wanted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, the club, the the, the team, the manager, they they're not going to let that get to their heads. They're going to sit there and you know and really concentrate and go. Look, this is as we said, a banana skin. As as with last year, it, it's ninety minutes and anything can happen. And yeah. both teams will be dreaming of getting there. Of course, we had a, a you know our moment of getting there last year. We loved it to have a repeat. Um, and uh, really praying that happens. Um, and just got to go into it and, and enjoy it. And the same as if we do get there, I think it'll be a different experience for a lot of us who went last year. I think we can maybe not be as overawed a little bit. I think we can take in the surroundings a bit nicer and, and enjoy the day for what it is. Um, and hopefully get some silverware. If, if we get past Macclesfield, that is. Uh, oh, Mick, it's having a bit of connection issues with a few people here. Um, we've got uh, get. Oh, that was uh, Eve Hurst and Faye uh, Killeen. Killeen, yeah. The other players. Uh, so I did have their pictures, but for some reason, we're having a little issue with um, StreamYard. And I believe the StreamYard server is on the Facebook server. So when there's been problems with that, I think we've had trouble on. Um, on StreamYard as well. Uh, the book is a fantastic read. Yes, it certainly is. We'll put that back up again. If you do want to win the book, hashtag book, and uh, have to be able to pick it up from the game on Tuesday or the following home game. Uh, so please do remember that before entering. We've got lots of people are joining us on here as well. Lots of people watching on Twitter. And we'd love you to migrate over to YouTube and send us messages and they come through better than what they do from uh, the uh, Twitter feed. And uh, just while we're on, we'll play a cheeky little advert for uh, the uh, social medias and we'll be back in a second. <laughs> And there we are. We are back. Remember, we are on all social medias. Need to be a bit more active on Instagram, I must admit. Uh, the ref was quite annoying on Saturday. Now, I don't know if this is the commentator's curse, but we were praising him at halftime, Mark. Um, he had not He had been not involved. <laughs> no comment. No comment. No comment, <laughs> Mark. Uh, <laughs> be nice. Get it. No comment. <laughs> Just frozen. Like, he's 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 everything, didn't it? Oh, right, that's as well. <laughs> We've disgusted him so much. Uh, superhero <laughs> Lily. Um, Sean Parry, who went to school with me. Uh, I remember Mr. Esther. He was absolutely fantastic. A bit off the wall, but he was great. Um, you could get him really sidetracked and didn't have to do any work because you'd just start them on something and he would talk about it for about an hour and uh, he didn't have to do work. Um, but I'm not entering us as bound to win. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you as well, Stevie. Well, when the pub that he put it in, in. Uh, let's see people entering the competition there. Charles Woff, uh, I was taking pictures for three papers on Saturday. I can assure you it's hard to keep up uh, the finger on the shutter where uh, with them other teams scores. Thankfully, the heat pictures, heat pictures were used. Yeah, as it always. Yeah. Yeah. That he gets. Here's one for you, Paget Rangers. I went down to that one. Oh, oh God, that, that was, was a, a, the day where uh, the, the game at the end uh, to give the pies because it got cancelled. 
and Gary Davison took the pies and ended up with uh, food poisoning. <laughs> I can remember that being a very, very long trip to the, um, if there's any children watching, close your ears, the arse end of Birmingham. It was absolutely mundane, wasn't it, that one? Yeah. Uh, the and they're not even going now. Nah, the football was even worse. Um, it wasn't a bad little ground. It, was, it had the makings of something, but obviously didn't have the support. Uh, we've got here, uh, still no one got the question, which player has the most games in all competitions this decade? Oh, didn't, oh, see, didn't that. see that. Sorry. Sorry. So, so which player, which player, so what was the question? Which players had the most games in all competitions in the last decade? Oh, that since 2020? No, uh, well, I don't know if it's the last 10 years or... Yeah. Yeah. That's but it's 14 to 2024. You'd have to, you'd have yeah. to see Greg. He's got to be up there, hasn't he? Greg's got to be up there. Yeah, when did Greg sign for us? 2018? Mm-hmm. I'd so, say Greg. Yeah, apart from injury this year. Clarky could be a few from Who? 2014. Who? Clarky. Clarky. Yeah, and nobody retired in 2017, didn't he? Aye. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Tough one, that. Um, but if anyone wants to have a guess, please do get them in. I'm on that one. Uh -huh. uh, right. Let's have a little look down here. Uh, I'm off to Wembley uh, the day after the Heat are playing the semi finals. I'll report back. Uh, what, are you going to a concert? Or is, let us know. You, you tease the Wigan partners are not in the. Pizza cup or something? I'm not too sure. But uh, last time I was at Wembley, 2014 playoff with my brother and dad, who sadly passed away in 2018. Uh, I couldn't make the last one, but if we can make it this year, I'm going to try and take my dad's shirt in spirit. Well, that'd be fine. Hopefully, yeah, that'd, be nice that'd, be yeah. that'd be a great touch, that dear uh, uh, Barry. Who's stopping down for the weekend? Uh, in <laughs> sorry, for the week between the playoff <laughs> and the trophy. <laughs> Um, could you imagine if there's any kids listening? If we get to Wembley twice, I'm going to have to stand in Central Station with my back passage on display, shaking a rattly money tin. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get much rent, I tell you. Um, <laughs> people are putting in there, there Curtis or Greg Ollie, people Greg putting Ollie. Uh, appearances uh, mm. since 2022, yeah, this decade. So, so in the last four years, oh, oh, in the last four years, well, it's got to be Ollie. It's got to be Ollie. Oh, I don't uh... Tinks. Yeah. No, Tinks. he went away and come back, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ollie, if you think, apart from the injury this year, he's, he's been pretty. Oh, well, there we go. It's been confirmed. It is. It's Greg Ollie. Yeah, yeah there we go. So there we go. Uh, some predictions. Good question, though. We'll get the predictions yeah. in later. Uh, people will have sent some, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, oh, you know, evil laugh coming up. Now, now, people held me to coming out of the water like James Bond. Mickey, <laughs> we're going to hook you to it, Mickey. <laughs> Come on! That says I might have to, that, if uh, I think no, you're... No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I, I said, look, I would I will get in the sea. I'm not standing in several stations flogging me ass. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what you said. Here I'm, it lo is. I'm looking for the tin now. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you put, here's your money. It takes your choice. <laughs> You're going to be his corner, man. And so we Yeah, um, it is the Peter Cup final. What's the money? Uh, what's the money going to go to making when you raise it? <laughs> but just, just, just to get me in train at the Wembley twice, <laughs> and an inflatable ring to sit on. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it is. <laughs> my brother Patrick uh, attempted to book uh, an early hotel for the final. Uh, I know someone who's booked two. I must have, I, I, booked one, I booked one in January just in case because I looked out of like, um, like oh, just, just cancel, like cancel it with a week. Yeah, you can, you can you it the within before. a week, uh, uh, this one's within twenty four hours of going, and um, the, there isn't many available, and the prices are astronomical. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to wow. stay in the Hilton or the uh, Saint George Hotel? You're talking. 700 pounds for two nights what yeah 
Yeah. See, yeah. if I if I was going down, if I'm going down for the to stay over, I'd go down on the the Saturday or the Friday. Uh huh. Oh, and well, on the, on the game, the day of the game, and then come back the next day. I would stay outside of London and just commute in. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Um, and there isn't many available. I think the hotels know it's a cup final, so they're holding the rooms back to put the price. Yeah. It's, wow. it, it, it's, it's, it's crappy. It's crappy, but they do it for. That's how they make their money around there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Mickey, wow. do you do mate rates? <laughs> 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 I've never ever done it before, to be honest, cow. Yeah. Uh, Mike, yeah. <laughs> I've never ever done it before, so I wouldn't know. Um, I think he's misspelled this. He's put, you said it, Mickey, you back out. It should be you back on. Um, <laughs> Dave, can you remember? Um, you said he did not read out that we'll have to have two chances this year to get the Wembley. It's still on. We have, we have got a chance. But I, as I say, I think with respect to our opponents in the FA Trophy, you, you've got to fear them. You have to. I think anyone at this stage, that they've earned the right to be there. They've played more games than us as well. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, it is where it is. And uh, we've got uh, one second. So have I. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's about if he's going to sell his body in Central Station. He's got the underpants for it. Uh, food crack tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And Vanessa, come and stay in Wickham. It's only 20 minutes direct on the train from Wembley. Well, oh, there you go. Um, but look, we're not there yet. So uh, let's, but, let's, yeah. let's not even go there. Yeah, I refuse let's, to go let's, there. Let's get the sixth of April. Yeah, that's got to come first. Yeah, it certainly has. And um, look, it's it, I've, I've, by no means do I think we're guaranteed anything, uh, especially not in a knockout competition and uh, a team that will be bringing a massive uh, away contingent, probably the biggest this season, I would hazard a guess. I, 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 yeah, yes, with, without a doubt. Yeah, I've got interest just from a neutral point of view, both semi finals are good, aren't they? I mean, you're the other ones, it's, it's a bit of a cracker, that one. Bromley, Solihull, I mean, you know, two clubs in the top five, I mean, yeah. that's a belt of a game as well. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, Hull will probably be good to draw that one away to Bromley, but hey, um, someone has to be aware. I've got it. Um, uh, let's have a look here. Um, right, 1980 81 season. What position did Gated finish in the what season? 80 81. 80 81. We, did, we didn't win it that year, did we? With 100 points. No, no, that what was league, what league were we in? Was, it was the Northern Premier League. Northern Premier League. 88. We went up in 82, didn't we, with 100 points? Um, I think so, yes. So, I yeah. think the table, because I'm sure we're near the bottom then pulled away. Six, yeah, sixth bottom. Uh, we, uh, yes, as uh, one. Seventh bottom, sixteenth place. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, one the other bottom and pulled away. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, see, that's what you can win with this book. Hashtag book if you'd like to win this. Uh, and remember, be able to get that. Uh, be able to pick it up with the game. Uh, we've got here Steve Farnfield. He's put. Uh, no, I'll just let uh, you know my hotel's booked, and Vanessa, another five thousand can call in at yours. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, I'll, I would say in a garden, I'll fresco. What, yeah. what, what, you, what you should have done, you should have booked out like in January, you should have booked out like, four or five rooms and then be flogging them now and making a profit. <laughs> um, we've got here, uh, Colin Dilbert. I remember, I can't remember what I paid uh, last season for one night in the hotel. It was a two minute walk, the ground, about uh, 60 pounds comes to me. You must have got oh, a bargain there, son. Either that or it didn't have walls or a roof um, or, for that. Or, 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 or he was doing a Mickey. He was, I was doing a Mickey. Um, <laughs> it's only yeah, it's like, weird scan at the minute. It could be a tent on Clapham Common. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing fortunes? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we've got we've got here yeah, we've got uh, Mickey uh, in about one rotation away from debit card on camera change. <laughs> well, oh, 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 Mickey, Mick, Mickey, can you can you can, can you do the credit card down the? No, no. That's not 
Beep. Beep. Well, I can tell you where Wi Fi is, prod. Oh. <laughs> well, the hand sanitizer. Right. Um, <laughs> let's get your predictions in for tomorrow's game and the weekend's game away to Ebbsfleet. So, if you want to start sending them in now, and then we can start to get everyone uh, to get, well, we can. Our lovely uh, statistician. Well, we've got two really because we've got the the prediction league one. Johnny Gray will be able to collect them and manage the uh, prediction league table. Uh, Mickey, I'll go for yours first. Tomorrow night and Saturday. Um, I'm thinking two two nil against Dagenham and a one all draw at Ebbsfleet. Oh, I uh, yeah, similar kind of uh, scores. I was going for three one for tomorrow night. I thought I fancy the win. Um, but Ebbsfleet, yeah, they're on a good good form at the moment. Four wins out of four for Ebbsfleet. So yeah. um I, I was actually going for one one as well, Mickey. That's that's something in my head. So I'll stick with that. I'll three one and one one. I'll go uh three one tomorrow night and one one on Saturday. Uh, you said. <laughs> um, right, I've got the predictions are coming in. Gavin Rudd has went two one Tuesday, one nil Saturday. Uh, Mr. Luke three nil Dagenham Redbridge. Louise Dick has put two one against Dagenham Redbridge, one nil Evsfleet uh, to Gateshead. Uh, two two for both. See Steve Farnfield. Uh, watch out for them splinters uh, on your backside, Stevie. Um, two one uh, to the heed uh, tomorrow, and two one uh, says Ken Webster. Uh, so one one on Saturday, uh, and so three two to us. Mister Luke's just uh, ratifying that. Um, three one Tuesday, Sean Parry two two Saturday, uh, Jack Robson three two tomorrow, and uh, take a point at Ebbsfleet. Two one on Saturday says Mister Luke. He's, he's making sure he's getting all his um, his messages in uh, individually. Um, we've got uh, two one Dagenham, uh, two one Dagenham, uh, two. Well, I don't know. Hang on, I don't know. We've got two and two. Predictions went two one both games. That is, isn't oh, it? Two, 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 two. Uh, yeah. uh, Trina has went three two to the heed uh, on Saturday's game. Uh, let's have a little look around here. Um, Darcy has got two one on Saturday, one nil on uh, so two one on Tuesday, one nil on Saturday. Um, uh, <laughs> and it's but it's not uh i think it's not my backside that needs to watch out i think he's meant to say there um so um if you know in three one in both says die evans there so fantastic stuff we've got a lot of messages in a lot of predictions are still coming in keep them going i uh, remember um we'll probably put a little tweet out as well mm -hmm. tomorrow if anyone wants to reply to that if they didn't watch this live they can get their predictions in and so on but when do you think the chesterfield game is going to be midweek one time but um i'm not that bothered to be honest i'm glad we haven't got that game because uh, we've got a semi-final to look forward to i'll Indeed. tell you what it is that may give them the chance to win the league because i was hoping that we when we went to this game they didn't need the three points to win the league yeah, I think they yeah. can actually win it. It's um, Solihull, can't they? I think. Uh, weeks time, we, yeah. Got a week's time. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. 3 1 to the Heed and 1 1 on Saturdays. Went the same as us there, Steely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that's my job, uh, says Trina. I'm going to have to be back today. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're not going to get into pegging. Um, we've. Uh, <laughs> 2 1 uh, tomorrow and 1 in on Saturday, says Callum Chambers. The, the, <laughs> the predictions are flying. <laughs> Dagenham 2 2 Ebbsfleet. Uh, we've got uh, only Tuesday available, is 23rd of March. They're going to come thick and fast, these games at this time of year. We know that. Yeah. Um, 2 0 tomorrow and 1 0 on Saturday, says David Chambers. So you want to get them in, you can. If there's any other things that you, you just want to talk about, of course, what we didn't mention is that Dejon Brown is um actually in the team of the week marks back and i think yeah, I'm so, and i'm guessing that's he's that's there as well that's because it's half time in the newcastle match so he's back <laughs> it is uh, really it is it has to be gone half time um, having, uh, having some wi-fi issues yeah um right um but we've got uh the 20 england c games on the 23rd so potentially if that game is rearranged we'd be without Mr. Uh, Francis, then, if that was the case, 
Um, Gavin Rudd has put family show. It, it is. Um, oh, Pegging is about um, putting your clothes out on the line. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. What have I missed? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mark, Mark, you don't you do want to know. It's Mickey's turn this year about the whole Wembley thing. Yeah. I see his- I, I said that if we get to Wembley twice, I might have to sell my arse at Central Station and I'll get enough money to go on. And now I'm being held of it. <laughs> Mickey, you wouldn't even get to Gateshead Stadium without never mind Wembley. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, that, that's the sad thing, and the, these people want us to see it. <laughs> well, yeah, there is people that like fetishes, you know what I mean? People are awesome. <laughs> so there will be somebody out there for Mickey. Um, uh, after, all <laughs> after all, you've got Trina. <laughs> <laughs> She's into him. Um, we've got a uh, Chesterfield game, maybe on the Thursday. Uh, like last season, we played Eastley. Could be, could be. Um, and, uh, we've got um, one second. Johnny Gray has obviously put his prediction in 4 0 tomorrow. And one one on Saturday, and uh, can we ask who's gets its all time top scorer, Dave? Well, there was a little Paul bit of dispute. That's Paul Thompson. Uh, it was worked out. That's, I think it's one hundred and twenty eight goals, one hundred and twenty seven goals, one of the two. But Paul Thompson is the record goal scorer for Gates at the moment. Mark, uh, we haven't had your prediction for tomorrow night and for Saturday's game. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll say two one Gated, and uh, just to be really boring, I'll say two one Gated on Saturday as well. Ah, well, there we go. Uh, let's see, we'll keep it all going. We've got, we've got about eight minutes remaining. So, if anyone's got anything else to add in, uh, of course, Dejon Brown uh, obviously scoring his first uh, senior goal. It, it, what a week he had. Um, you know, four goals officially uh, in the space of seven days and team of the week as well. Um, and, and, team, and an assist. And an assist, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Harsh. It is harsh, isn't it? It is. But uh, no, I mean, we can sing his plaudits all day long, but the team around him is doing fantastic stuff as well. And as Mark mentioned, the you know, the run from Booty, the pass for the other goal for, um, from Hassani, sometimes go under the radar because the striker always takes the plaudits, don't they? They take the headlines, but yeah. you know, these are team goals um, that are still scoring as well. Yeah. I don't remember Greg Ollie could be back on Saturday as well for the Ebb Street game. Yeah. On the bench, yeah. Well, um, someone's just asked Darcy's put when is the book draw? Well, the book draw is about to be any second now. We're going to give someone, we'll give it 30 seconds. Hashtag book. <coughs> you want to win Requiem to Red Jeff. There it is. <coughs> uh, the great historical record of Gateshead. Great read. Um, if you want to get that, you have to be able to pick it up from the commentary desk at Gateshead International Stadium at one of the next home games. So we've got 13 people in there. We'll give it a chance for anyone else to get into it. But while we're waiting for someone, someone, Jack Robson's posed a question, Dodge to start tomorrow. Um, I, I don't know if I said it on the show or I said it before we came on air. I, I think we may save him for the weekend. I think, um, don't want to burn him out too young. He's still, you know, he's still only 18. Um, great player to have to come off the bench. I thought there was... Uh-huh. A, a slight dropping of the energy levels in the second half towards yeah. the end. So I wouldn't be shocked if he's rested um, and then brought back on Saturday, possibly depending on how things go tomorrow. Yeah. Um, um, it's his first chance of senior football and you've, Rob's consistently said it. Um, I, I do have a question, by the way, a trivia question. Yeah. For everyone. Um right. Gator have scored five hat tricks in all competitions this season, and there's been five different goal scorers in them. Can you name them all? Oh, well, obviously, Brown, Brown Dina, 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 Dina. Wern. Wern was another one. Um, oh, oh, now it gets tough. Now it gets tough. Any of the midfielders? Uh, Ollie, no, Hannant. Nope. No, Hannon scored braces, hasn't he? Aye. Uh, In all competitions. Oh, someone's got it. Chadwick. Chadwick. And Rutledge. Yeah. Oh, Rutledge, of yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah, Doom yeah. Challenge Cup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's well done. Well done, Johnny yeah. Gray. Got in there quick with it. So yeah, the, yeah. Next, the next question would be what's the, and, and I don't know the answer to this, by the way, but someone will be able to tell us, I'm sure. What's the most amount of different hat trick scorers Gateshead's had in a season? 
Because oh, oh, because mm-hmm. five is some effort, by the way. It is. It is. Yeah. Actually. yeah. I mean, the, the goals have been shared around. Someone's asked if we remember Dean Trot. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so he got was... one at Dagenham, I believe. Yeah. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to go on here with um, the draw. So good luck to everybody. Here we go. Oh, nervous tension. Ooh. Oh, it's Louise Dick. <laughs> what? <laughs> they just can't stop winning in that household. Obviously, John won the mug last week and Louise has won the book this week. So there we go. Come to the commentary desk Good tomorrow work. and you can collect that. So well done. Remember, you have to... Wait, is anybody got any tap the raffle? Just bring it here and we'll give it out to the Dick family. Yeah, we will. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of a set E. Um, so. <laughs> now, it's a really good book, Louise. You and John will enjoy reading that. And of course, I know there's skeptics out there that say, oh, well, they've won, but you've got to be in it to win it. We have 75 people watching, 13 people entered. So you could have been new, but there we go. Louise has given us a woo. So well done, <laughs> Louise. Um, once again, uh, say what we want from everybody is to be at the game. Uh, our, said it many it's times we we'll always appreciate people listening in but the Macclesfield game especially yeah. and the league running games get down to Gated Stadium 10, ten games to go yeah you've seen in the highlights what we can do the goals we scored even the you know earlier in the season against Kidderminster was it 37 passes um you know, there's some special things happening and it needs to be witnessed and it needs to be, um, let's say, supported. So please get your friends down, drag them down. They will not be disappointed. And um, whether it's a league game or the FA Trophy semi final on the 6th of April, it should be an absolutely fantastic uh, occasion. Because I think Macclesfield should bring anywhere from 500 to 1,000, you would think, if not more. And it will make it a beautiful atmosphere. And hopefully we can get three, four, five, hopefully 6,000 people coming along to witness it. And uh, the more, the merrier. Um, I'll, not, I'll not say anything because I'm not there tomorrow. So Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's left me in the lurch. Um, hopefully uh, be at Rochdale and Macclesfield Games. Good stuff, good stuff. And uh, Steve Farnfield, we've got uh, Mickey and Steely. Uh, it's like the Crammons never left to win uh, on away trips. <laughs> Aye. that's it I uh, used to do uh, bingo and quizzes on the bus that's for the longer the Crammons always won <laughs> always, always. Uh, crowd against Barnet and the trophy um, last year was good but hopefully we can do better against Macclesfield of course that's what we want definitely what there was, what was Saturday's attendance? Uh, 11,200 and something but there was nine, was it 97 fans? yeah, yeah. Uh, and I tell you what, they made themselves heard once the second goal went in. It's all you could hear. <laughs> it was a pin <laughs> drop. But uh, yeah. look, credit to them, and uh, you know that they, they got a bit of excitement in the game, didn't they? So that's that's what it's all about. Well, it's one of our fans, Bob from Peterborough. He come up on their coach. Oh, I hope they didn't have him tied to the front grill of the bus on the way home. <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> Aye, uh, well, as I say, I, I, I'm sure you would have been look, well looked after. But uh, lads, uh, another big week coming. It's been positive as it's been for a lot of this season, which is absolutely lovely. Um, long may it continue. Uh, big thank you to you all for joining us, and especially everyone that's tuning in. Uh, as I said before, there's a lot of people watching on Twitter. Come over to YouTube, subscribe, help us reach more. But we appreciate that you're there now, which is absolutely amazing. And it just shows that the growth is happening here with the interest in Gated. It's not about the podcast, it's about Gated. And that's what we want to push forward and uh, get you along there with us. Well, again, I have a few things to say. Yep. The foundation, I was at the foundation day to day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. I again, an absolutely excellent. It was a. Chicken tagine were made this today, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, apparently, I'm doing the dishes next week. So, well, there you go, there you go. Well, well hopefully, we're going to have some things for the foundation to put up shortly, won't we? As yeah. well, which would be great. And uh, we're um, um, goal of the season. Oh. You know how you normally have ten. Yeah, I think we're kind of going eight to Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got. It's going to be. Was in that this year. 
difficult decision. I think Hannan got himself in there, but we know that the worst goal celebration was on Tuesday night uh, past. It was the awful little dance, and they live together as well, so they've practiced that in their living room. That's awful, isn't it? Um, but we'll leave them on that note. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we're all off to find a spot for Mickey to stand in Central Station in a couple of weeks' time. And, yeah. uh, we're, we're <laughs> it's, uh, can I get arrested for that? <laughs> I'm A and B, I'm not going to make notes. So. No, well, no, we're putting out free advertisement here, Mickey. You can't buy this advertisement. Right. <laughs> Everybody, we'll see you next time. Uh, thank you, lads, and thank you to everyone that's tuned in. Um, and say, hopefully, we have a fantastic week here with Gateshead coming up. I can't find the, end, the exit screen. I'm not having any pictures come up here, so I'm just going to have to end it like this, and we're all going to wave and say bye. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you. There we go. It helps if I press end. <laughs> <laughs>